There are few things that have a greater impact on the male physique than estrogens. Okay, here's the thing with this video. I'm not here to try to scare you into not consuming any kind of things that are gonna trigger estrogen in your body. My purpose with this video is to educate you so you can moderate consumption and make the right lifestyle changes, not to scare the heck out of you. Hey, if you're looking for an unbiased approach to health, wellness, and fitness, then I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications and know whenever I post a new video on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays at 7 a.m. Pacific time. All right, let's get down to the brass tacks. So first off, we have to understand just a little bit about estrogen. Okay, estrogen is very important. We need it. Men need it. Women need it. But it's also one of the things that if we overdo just a tiny bit, can send us into a downward spiral that destroys our physique. Okay, if you're holding a lot of water, if you feel puffy, if you just feel like you're having a hard time getting rid of excess body fat, then to be completely honest, there's a highly, highly likely chance that you are having an issue with estrogen. And a lot of it isn't necessarily your fault. It can be the overconsumption of things that are just seemingly healthy. And I wanna help you understand what they are. Because when we look at estrogen, you have to remember that it tells your body to enter into this aromatase cycle where it continues to build more fat. Once the aromatase enzyme is activated, which processes estrogen within your body, it triggers your body to store fat. And the more fat cells that you have, the more aromatase enzymes that you have, which means the more activity, the more aromatase activity, the more estrogenic activity. So more fat equals more estrogen. More estrogen equals more fat. Do the math. We have to control it and stop it somewhere. So what we have to look at when it comes down to understanding the estrogens that we consume is the two different kinds. We have xenoestrogens and phytoestrogens. Xenoestrogens are foreign estrogens that are formed outside of an animal body. Okay, And then we have phytoestrogens, which are estrogens that are formed inside of a plant. They both have very similar effects within the body, but slightly different in terms of their molecular makeup. So let's take a look at the first thing I want you to start modulating so you can really get a grasp on your estrogen and try to get those things in check. All right, this first one is gonna be wheat and grains. I'm not gonna tell you not to consume wheat and grains at all, but I am gonna tell you to start considering your source and modulating whenever you can. They're very high in a xenoestrogen known as zeralanone, also known as a ZEA. So a ZEA is very, very similar to estrogen in terms of its molecular structure, so much so that it mimics estrogen inside our bodies. So whenever we consume ZEAs, our body thinks we have an influx of estrogen. Now the reason that ZEAs form in wheat so much is simply because there is a fungus that grows in wheat, especially in uncontrolled environments. So when wheat is sitting around for a while, which it typically has to do when it's waiting for harvest, it ends up forming this fungus. And this fungus causes these ZEAs to form, which cause a big issue within our bodies. Now what these ZEAs do is they bind to very specific estrogen receptors within our body, specifically the receptor for 1,7-estradiol. 1,7-estradiol is probably the most important estrogen that we need to be paying attention to. And I'll explain it in a little bit more detail in the latter part of this video. So I wanted to make sure that you're staying tuned. Now to put matters into perspective, there was a study that was published in the Journal of Cell Chemical Biology, and it took a look at ZEAs and their effect on something known as letrozole. Okay, so letrozole is a pharmaceutical that is designed as an anti-estrogen. So it's sort of the job of letrozole to go in there and kill off extra estrogen. Guys take it if they're holding a lot of water, women will take it for various reasons, and a lot of times you see bodybuilders take it to try to cut some extra water to look a little bit leaner. The point is, is letrozole is very, very, very powerful. And what they found in this study was that even a small to moderate amount of ZEAs nullified the effects of letrozole. So meaning it made estrogen so powerful that letrozole couldn't even do its job. It had such a powerful effect on the estrogen receptor and the 1,7-estradiol receptor that it basically made it like this pharmaceutical didn't exist. That just gives you an idea of the magnitude of simple ZEAs that are sitting in our wheat and in our grains. Okay, now we have to talk about soy for a second. One that you've probably heard all the time. Countless guys on the internet will tell you not to consume soy because you're gonna end up having massive amounts of estrogen, yada, yada, yada. Well, first I wanna say this. You can handle a little bit of soy, guys. It's not gonna kill you, and it's not gonna make your estrogen levels go through the roof. The issue comes into play with the overconsumption of soy. And I'll explain that in one second because unfortunately, there is a good likelihood that you're already consuming too much soy. So soy is high in what is called an isoflavone, okay? Soy isoflavones are phytoestrogens. They're plant estrogens. They're estrogens that are formed inside of a plant. 
and they do two different things inside the human body, specifically in the male body. What they do is they downregulate androgen activity while upregulating estrogen activity. So what that means is they act upon the estrogen receptors, telling our body that we have a lot more estrogen, while simultaneously downplaying our androgen receptors. Androgen is what makes us men. It really is what allows us to have those male pattern characteristics, a deeper voice, sometimes uh, losing our hair, things like that. Androgens are what really make us have those male characteristics. So if we don't have a lot of androgens, we can't really get that, that extra edge that we want, what really makes us a man. So when we downregulate that, because we're simultaneously upregulating estrogen, which is putting us into a vicious cycle. So when we're in that kind of situation, you can see how it can become a huge, huge problem. And specifically, we're acting upon the 1,7-estradiol receptor, which is one of the most potent, important ones that we need to be paying attention to. Now, to make matters even worse, unfortunately, soy isoflavins are very, very goitrogenic which is a word that basically means they affect your thyroid. They downregulate your thyroid. So when we downregulate our thyroid, we have a subsequent downregulation of testosterone. And when we have a downregulation of testosterone, we allow estrogen to remain up here. So if our testosterone levels are here and our estrogen's here, and then we suddenly drop our testosterone, our estrogen levels stay high. And if that ratio is out of proportion, the high levels of estrogen continue to sort of envelop the testosterone, making it so that ratio gets even worse. So that's where we run into a big problem. But again, you're probably not eating a bunch of tofu, but you are probably eating a bunch of meat. So here's where the problem starts. The biggest protein source of almost all the meat products that we ever eat is soy meal. Okay, soy meal is fed to chickens, it's fed to cows, it's fed to pigs, but by and large, it has the biggest effect on chickens. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Bioscience, Biotechnology, and Biochemistry that took a deep dive look at the effect of soy on a chicken. So what they did is they gave some chickens soy and they gave some chickens traditional feed that didn't have soy. What they found is that the chickens that consumed the soy ended up having a large amount of the soy isoflavones transfer into the yolk of their egg with a peak on the 12th day. So what that means is that whenever they consume soy, it went through the body and into the actual egg. When it peaks at 12 days, that means that we have sort of a cumulative buildup. So this particular study only looked at a one-off situation of when the chickens were fed soy. Imagine chickens that were consistently fed soy. Okay, now another study found that the soy isoflavones transfer equally into the tissues of the hens, which means when you're consuming chicken and you're consuming the breast and you're consuming the thigh, you're consuming a huge portion of soy isoflavones. That's why it's very, very, very critical that you find a pasture-raised source of chickens that are not fed soy meal. Now, in case you don't know, I'm a huge proponent of ButcherBox, and they are a huge sponsor of this channel because they recognize what I do in terms of advocating the proper consumption of real meats. So they sponsored this video and they're offering everyone that's watching this video a massive discount on their grass-fed, grass-finished beef, but also their pasture-raised chicken. So go ahead and click the link in the description and you can check that out. But I want to explain a little bit more about one more thing you need to know when it comes down to estrogens in the body. But before I move on to the next thing that's affecting estrogen in men, I also want to leave you with this. It was found that poultry manure had four times the amount of total estrogens than any other manure. Okay, it also found there was nine times the amount of 1,7-estradiol in poultry manure compared to beef and pork. So what this means is that chicken ends up having the highest level of soy in it, and it also has the highest level of the dangerous 1,7-estradiol estrogen that we do not want in our bodies. So again, if you want an inexpensive source of poultry, click on the link down below. Lastly, I want to talk about BPAs. Now, by and large, we're seeing that BPAs have been sort of eradicated out of the plastics that we use now. But there's still a lot of Tupperwares out there that have BPAs in them. BPAs activate in the liver, and they do some interesting things within the body. They actually trigger the brain via RNA to create more estrogen receptors, which means you now have more localized points for estrogen to absorb. So this is a very, very severe issue. We're actually acting upon the RNA and the DNA. We're actually changing the body's structure so that it absorbs more estrogens. So when you think about the double whammy of putting chicken in a plastic Tupperware and then microwaving the Tupperware because you're eating six times per day, you can see the impact that you're gonna have on your body. Also, insert point why I'm a big fan of intermittent fasting. You don't have to be carrying the Tupperware around all the time. 
Now, there was a study that was published in the Journal of Sterility and Fertility that took a look at 218 men. Okay, some of these men, they had used BPAs. They measured if they had BPAs in their system. Well, lo and behold, those that had BPAs in their system had three to four times the likelihood of having reduced sperm motility and sperm count, which is a very good indicator of not only lower testosterone levels, but also increases in estrogen. So when you combine all of these things together, these are things we're consuming all the time. We consume wheat, we consume dairy, we consume chicken, we consume beef, and we're consuming these things that are just adding up inside our bodies. So yeah, sure, some people will say that all the people that talk about avoiding soy are crazy, but the reality is that you're consuming a heck of a lot more soy than people were 50, 60, 70 years ago. So yes, you should be able to consume a little bit of soy, but the problem, you can't just consume a little bit of soy unless you are truly truly paying attention to what's on a label and truly paying attention to what you're putting in your body. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, you know where to put them. And please, please, please do us all a favor and keep this channel going by supporting ButcherBox down below in the description. I will see you in the next video.